Okay, uh, good to go. Hope everyone can hear me. Everyone is uh, spending their time here listening to me talk about shortcuts to success rather than eating a sandwich. Um, so yeah, shortcuts to success, um, as the abstract talked about, it's kind of why keyboard shortcuts are useful. It's not that to be a great programmer you need to know all these amazing shortcuts, and if you don't know these you're, you're never going to be uh, good at programming. It's just that uh, as a, a lead developer at the, the company I'm at now, Elmax, I kind of, we, we do a lot of pair programming. So quite often I'm paired with people of, of different abilities. Sometimes they're you know, very experienced, sometimes they're not very experienced. And things I find are that the, the very good experienced people make writing code look effortless. And part of that is knowing how to use some keyboard shortcuts, know the tools that you're using. Um, so this talk is about that. Um, so if we look at some text in a regular old text editor, here I am, hopefully people can see my cursor. Um, we're gonna start at the very basics. So in a text editor, I can place a cursor by clicking, but I can also use the cursor keys. Um, most devices will have these, uh, and you can navigate around. Hopefully people know that. Um, there are other things you can do with those cursor keys, and there are modifier keys. So holding shift, and using the cursor keys, I can select things. I don't just have to click and drag the mouse, potentially inaccurately. But I'm having to do it character by character. What if I hold down control and use the arrow keys? It's, now it's hopping word by word. So this is pretty much a universal thing, every platform, every uh, computer. I, I will point out I'm using Linux and GNOME here, just in case there's any specific weirdness. <laughs> Mac. Um, so, Control hops words. What if I control shift? I can select whole words at a time. I don't need to sit there doing this all the time. I can do whole words. Um, this can free up time. Ideally, when you're programming, you spend most of your time thinking about what you're going to write. You don't then want to spend a lot of time tappity tapping away. You want to get that information out of your head and into the computer as quickly and effortlessly as possible. And these are the kind of things that help. Um, Show of hands here, who knows the difference between backspace and delete? We've got a few hands, but <laughs> not everyone. Um, so there are two keys on a standard keyboard, uh, at least a standard UK layout. Um, I've got backspace, which will delete the characters before the, uh, the carrot, and I've got delete, which will delete characters after. And you can imagine what happens if I hold down control and do that, it will just delete the whole word to the other side. And the same for backspace. So if you're, you know, just moving around any old text editor, there are things you can do to, to speed up and whiz away. Um, another one which some people might think is, is a, a core tenet of any developer or, or programmer, Control-C to copy, Control-V to paste. The amount of time I've spent pairing with developers who read code and then type it out again character by character. Um, so those are kind of core standard um, input modes when doing any, any old text editing. Um, but we don't just write text in a text editor. Quite often we're in a terminal. Um, there are different shells in different terminals. So here I'm using ZSH. Um, one of the giveaways is that I've got this weird thing at the start. It's not just a dollar. Uh, bash is probably most common. Um, but there are things that are common between them. So I can uh, cd into a folder. And to get back, I could do cd dot dot. But I can also cd dash, which will take me back to wherever I was before. And it lets me know where it was. Uh, that's quite nice. I, I see a lot of people um, spending time typing out paths when they don't need to. Uh, quite often, you write some commands. You want to delete the whole thing. Control U will black that line. Um, you type a command with several things in it. You want to delete just the last word, Control W deletes the last word. Type a command, you want to go to the start, Control A, Control E to go to the end. So you don't have to sit there tapping arrow keys. You, you can move around. There are loads of shortcuts you can learn just in the terminal. Um, so if I Control E and Control U, delete the line. Let's uh, Vim a file. So Vim, everyone's favorite terminal text editor, if they're cool, unlike the Emacs people. Um, 
I'm not going to show you Vim shortcuts because there are loads of them. People who can use Vim blow my mind. Um, I use Vim for basic text editing on the terminal. And the one thing that people seem to get confused by as a, a beginner is how do I get out of this? You know, I hit, hit escape, I'm still in it, I'm stuck. And there is the classic Stack Overflow, how do I get out of Vim? Um, just so that people know, Vim and a few other editors are modal. So if I type, I'm not going to type characters into Vim because I'm not in insert mode. I have to press I and it pops up insert down the bottom. And if I'm in here, it's going to be even more difficult to escape. Um, but hit escape, you can hit it a few times, make yourself feel safe. Uh, semicolon and Q, the command shows down the bottom. Oh, we're out of Vim. Um, so that's kind of Vim. Uh, there are a lot of other editors with a lot of shortcuts. I'm a Java developer, and I think in the room, most people Java developers, yeah. Um, who here is using IntelliJ as their main IDE? Most of the hands in the room. People who don't have hands up, what, what are you using? Xcode. Xcode. Visual Studio Code is also a common one. Um, I'm going to talk about IntelliJ because as a Java developer, it's probably the most popular and I think incredibly powerful. Um, so a caveat here, I'm again, I'm on Linux and I'm using GNOME. Uh, and there are different key maps. So depending on what window manager I'm on in, in Linux, there are different key maps. If I'm on Mac, it's different keyboard shortcuts. If I'm on Windows, it's different keyboard shortcuts. Uh, the Windows and the GNOME ones are pretty similar. So hopefully these might be familiar to people. Um, probably the most useful keyboard shortcut in IntelliJ that I can think of is Control Shift and A, which lets you search in the actions. Um, it gives you a brief history as well. So you can see the other day I did a workshop, so I went to presentation mode I used. Theme, I changed it to light mode because here the screen is a projector and dark mode and projectors make people sad. Um, so Control E, if I want to find any command I can do, I can type it in here and I can find it. Um, so one of the other ones that will get you going uh, is the productivity guide, my productivity. This is in IntelliJ, it's been there forever. Um, can I make it a bit bigger? And it will tell you all the kind of useful productivity hacks that IntelliJ has and it thinks are relevant. How many times you've used them. Um, so you know, code completion, I've used that quite a bit. Um, some of these I've never used. And if I click on it, it will tell me, you know, here's the keyboard shortcuts and here's what it will do. So if you're thinking, yeah, I know all the IntelliJ shortcuts, almost certainly you don't, go in here, see, see what other options there are. What have you never tried before? What do you use a lot? If you use it a lot, maybe your colleague doesn't know about it and you can go over and say, hey, contact actions, you know you can alt enter. I'll give you contextual actions and they'll go, oh, thank you. Now I can use it 522 times um, and so on. So that's the productivity guide. Uh, another thing I find uh, developers maybe slip into a slightly bad habit might be opening a lot of files. Um, in my company, because we pair program, sometimes it's my machine, sometimes it's other people's machines. People have different setups. Uh, I keep my tabs. Uh, so I have many tabs open. I, I think I limit it to about 10. Any more than 10 tabs, it starts dropping off the old ones. Other colleagues of mine, no tabs are visible at all. You should be focusing on the file you're editing. But the common issue is I've gone through 10 classes trying to debug an issue. Where, where was I again? Um, do I have to go back over here, uh, not there, here, and just start scrolling around and go, oh, I think it was called that? No. That there is a recent files history, which is Control E, it tells you all the recent files you've had open in order of most recent. Uh, this is really useful, and the amount of time I've spent with people while they hunt for a file instead of just hitting Control E, incredible. Um, my favourite command in IntelliJ or keyboard shortcut uh, it was taught to me by a guy called Mike Barker, and it's Alt J, which will select the next occurrence of whatever you've already got selected. And it will then give you cursors. So if I want to change this, not from static final, but just take away final, or I can type you know, something else, and it will type it in all of the places. If you're not familiar with this, 
Uh, you're not looking at that going, oh my God, think of the things I can do with that. Trust me, you can do almost anything with that. Um, if you select too many things, uh, Alt-Shift-J will start kind of undoing your selections, and Control-Alt-Shift-J will select all of the instances in the open file. Um, this is great, absolutely wonderful. Um, in IntelliJ, one of the reasons that people really like IntelliJ is its refactoring tools. They're great. Um, so if I want to rename a variable, uh, I can right click on it, I can go to refactor, and it pops open a list with lots of things in it that then disappears. Um, so the refactor menu, there's all these things. You'll note next to it, it's got the keyboard shortcuts. So next time I want to rename something, I know it's Shift F6. And I can do that here, I can rename it something, and it will rename all instances. I can do it on functions. Um, and it will rename all instances. Find and replace is not an equivalent uh, to this. People who do find and replace, you're really missing out. Um, here we go, I, I'm trying to undo, I, I've made these changes. It's changed all sorts of files in this repository. Control Alt Z gives me my version control rollback. Uh, so I can roll back everything. Uh, if I've made lots of changes, I can control Alt Z while I've got one line selected and it will just undo that one line change. Uh, but otherwise it will do it generically. Um, hopefully, who here is software developer? Everyone can see the hands up. Who here writes tests? Not all the hands up. Um, hopefully, you're in the, the hand up kind of crew. Control Shift T, do I have tests for this? It will list them. If I don't have a test, it will default to create new test. Um, go to your tests. You don't have to, again, go through the file browser. Well, what was the class I was looking at? Is the test named the same thing? Um, so you can find all the tests. I could run them by clicking these things, or I can control shift F10, and it will, or control shift F11, rather, and it will run them uh, very slowly. So you can fly around just while running tests and doing, doing bits of debugging. That. Um, I want to add a new test. It's a personal bugbear of mine when I'm pairing with someone. I want to add a new test, and I see them start going out. No, no, come on. You can Alt Insert, which gives you the Generate menu. I want a test method. Yes, there we go. Boom. Test. It's even highlighted the name, so I can just type whatever I like. And when I hit Enter, it takes me into the body. You know, I had to click around and navigate around. Uh, this, by the way, is what's known as a live template in IntelliJ, and you can make your own. Um, so where I work, we have our own kind of messaging framework, and we need our own marshallers in and out. So I can just type marshaller on my work install of IntelliJ, and we've got a custom live template that will set up the cursors in all the right places where you need to go. It can auto-generate with contextual information like what class I'm in. So we have one just called logger. You just type logger, hit enter, and it will insert a, a log4j logger for the right class and initialize it. Um, another kind of classic one, although these are a bit harder to find and maybe not a keyboard shortcut, but IntelliJ, I need a main method. I could write it all PSVM, and it will do it. I want to write something to the console. I want to sout it. Yeah. Uh, there, there are these live templates. They're really useful. Um, another one that I find quite useful. Um, if I've got, say, some text, I could select it. I can control W to make my selection wider. So here I've gone from a word to all the words in the string. If I control W again, I'll include the double quotes, which can be quite useful. You know, if you select the string and you've got the double quotes by mistake, shift control W to, to narrow it. Um, control W, really useful uh, for expanding your scope. Um, control G, you've got a stack trace, you want to go find the line, scroll down, hopefully your code isn't so long that you're scrolling for long periods of time, um, but control G, you know, 120, is there a line 120? There is. Excellent. Jumping around. Um, yeah, and those are some of the shortcuts. There are many. Uh, I'd say the productivity guide, Google, colleagues, um, if you're working with someone, oh, how, how did you do that? How did you refactor? What, what keyboard shortcut was that? And then try and build this into your daily routine. Um, yeah, the, those are shortcuts. I don't know if anyone here has any favorite shortcuts as well. Um, 
that feel free to, to shout out. All center for yeah, line completion, contextual completion options is in IntelliJ wonderful. Yeah. Hopefully that will give you some food for thought as you program in the future. Thank you.